Okay, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about statistics. So statistics, statistics, when we think about that, we really think about things like newspaper articles or magazine articles or just information that's given out on things like Facebook, where they tell us something about Americans or uh, Michiganders or just some people in general or some type of artifact in general. And then they tell us about some type of statistics. Maybe it's like basketball statistics, how many free throws are shot, or things like that. Um, but the idea is that essentially when we're thinking about statistics, what we want to do is we want to answer a question about a group of people or a group of things. So that's our goal. Now, technically speaking, statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, and describing data. But truly, what we want to do is we want to answer a question about a group. That group that we want the question to be answered about is what we call our population. So usually we start out with a question about a population of people or things, and our goal is to actually try to answer that question the best that we possibly can. So here's an example. Suppose that I want to know the average number of classes or courses taken by a Wayne State student. Now you could change this question to virtually any question you want to answer about a group of people, places, things. Um, and so what ends up happening is when we're looking at this question, our goal is to now go and answer that question. This is about a group of people, and this group of people is very specific. It is Wayne State University students. So if I'm looking at this group of people, this is what I would call my population. So what we're going to do to answer this question, before I write down population and the definition of population, is we're going to think about what it would take to answer this question. What we'd have to do is we would have to collect some data. So in order to figure out the average number of courses taken by a Wayne State student, we have to go out and actually find out how many courses are being taken by a Wayne State student. So we have to collect that data. It's a lot of data. There are like 30,000 Wayne State students. So then we've got to organize that data. So we get that data in, we organize it in some way that makes it easy to add to answer the question. And then, ultimately, we're asking the question, so we want the answer to it, and we want, probably want to tell people about that answer, and so we should probably describe that data. Now, the data is going to come in, and um, it's not going to be, oh, I'm going to go out and ask the world what's the average number. I'm going to have to actually ask individual students how many classes that they're taking. And then when I'm describing that data, maybe I don't just have to tell them about the average number of courses taken by a Wayne State student. Maybe I tell them about like the fact that Maybe 20% of Wayne State students are taking more than five courses, or maybe 10% of students are taking, you know, six courses, or something crazy like that. Maybe there's some interesting pieces of information once we actually collect the data that we want to describe. So for this particular question, we have what's called a population. It is the group that we want the information about. It's the group of people or places, or things, we want info about. The population of this study is Wayne State University students. We want information about every single Wayne State University student. We want, we want information about the entire population of Wayne State University students. So this right here is our population. There's a question we're asking, and that's the number of courses. We call that our variable. The variable is the thing that can change from person to person, or from individual to individual. 
It's the thing that we measure, and it can vary, variable, it can vary from individual to individual. Which brings us to this idea of individual. Individual is one person, place, or thing inside the population. Now one of the goals here is that when we're studying something, if we're doing some type of observational study, which is basically going out and collecting the data and then organizing and describing it, we're going to have different questions that we might be asking about different groups of people. And those different groups of people that we want the information about are our populations. And the question that we're measuring, that's our variable, and then the individuals are the individual people in our population. So for instance, if I change this up a little bit, we'll keep this one going. But if I change it up a little bit, maybe I could say, I want to know how many pages are in the average textbook. Now our population is textbooks, and the individuals are the individual textbooks. So for example, I've got an individual textbook right here. The variable, the thing that changes from individual to individual, is the number of pages. So if I look inside this one, this one has... Second. This one has 900 979 pages. So all together there's 979 pages in this one. Now if I pick up a different textbook, maybe I find 728 pages. It changes from textbook to textbook and we're measuring it, so that's our variable. Variables don't always have to be numeric. All right, It sounds like a measurement needs to be numerical. Variable could also be something that's not numeric, like color. What color is your hair? Or what color are your eyes? Things like that. That's still a variable. It changes from, from individual to individual. Each time I change the question, I change the population, I change the individuals, I change the variable. Um, if I said I want to know how tall the ca filing cabinets are, the height of the filing cabinet would be the variable, the filing cabinets, all filing cabinets, would be the population, and the individuals would be individual filing cabinets, like the one that's standing next to me. So one of the questions you can ask now is, how do we actually go out and collect our data? Because that's what statistics does, we have to go and collect our data. In this particular question I have, what's the average number of courses taken by a Wayne State University student? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and either ask students or look up this information in Registrar or something like that. There are 30,000 Wayne State University students. One of the questions I could ask is, do I need to ask all of them? In general, your population is going to be so large that there's no reason to ask every single person in the population. So what we'll do instead is we'll hone in on a particular subset of individuals, which we'll call a sample. So we would like to optimally know the average number of courses taken by all Wayne State University students, but asking all 30,000 Wayne State University students is not feasible. So what we'll do is we'll take a sample. And a sample is a subset of the population. The sample is still made up of individuals, but it's a smaller group of individuals from the actual population. Now there are different types of samples. So the types of samples that we could run, we could do a convenient sample. So if I'm in a Wayne State University class, so for instance, if I have an online class and I have an online class of a bunch of students, I could simply just ask those students how many courses they're taking. So types of samples, I could do a convenient sample. A convenient sample is called a convenient sample because it's convenient. It is easy for me to ask people that are easy to get to. So for instance, if I am teaching a class, an online course, the easiest people to ask probably then are the people that are taking my online course. I just simply send out an email and I say, hey, how many courses are you taking? 
is convenient for me to ask these people. Now that's a sample inside Wayne State University students, and one of the questions you can ask yourself is whether or not that sample is representative. The problem is that all people that are in my online class have something in common. They're all taking online courses. Not every Wayne State University student is taking online courses. And so what I'm going to end up getting is I'm going to get an answer that's different among my online course students than what might be true across all Wayne State University students. So convenient sample is not always the greatest sample to actually give. So maybe I could change it. Maybe I could do a voluntary sample. Voluntary sample is when I get people to volunteer. So, for example, I could just go out in the middle of the campus and yell, Hey, how many courses are you guys taking? And then the only people that actually volunteer their answer are the ones that I collect the information from. Again, when people volunteer their answer, or if maybe I put it on Facebook, if people volunteer their answer, then what I end up getting is I get something that's not really representative. Maybe people want to tell me that they're taking tons of courses. I'm taking 28 courses right now. That'd be insane. But maybe they want to brag about it. And so the, the, when they volunteer their answer, maybe the answer that we're getting is not really indicative of what is true about all Wayne State University students. We could also do a simple random sample. Simple random sample means that I actually get a list of all Wayne State University students, and it's almost like I take them and write them down and throw them into a gigantic hat, and I pick out like a thousand of them. This is pretty good. This one's kind of golden. If I'm randomly selecting, that means that anyone that's in a Wayne State University student has the same chance of being chosen for my sample. So it's kind of like if I was trying to figure out whether or not what types of things you could roll on a die, then by randomly rolling the die, I would end up saying that a lot of times I get a 2, a lot of times I get a 1, a lot of times I get a 3, and so on and so forth. It's pretty random. And if it's pretty random, then I should get a pretty good feeling for what happens when you roll a die after I've done it about a thousand times. So if I randomly select people out of the Wayne State University student list and ask them how many courses they're taking, odds are I'm probably going to get a pretty good feeling for what the real population is doing. So a simple random sample, that one's pretty good. And I can actually run that and try to see what ends up happening. Now once I go out and I figure out what type of sample I want to do, now I've got to collect my data. I can do it through a survey. There's a whole different host of different ways that we can actually ask people. But if I do a simple random sample, maybe I get a list of people and then I just send them a piece of mail or something like that. The next question we can ask ourselves is, what type of variable are we looking at? Before, we said that variables could be numeric, or they don't have to be numeric. So there are two different types of data. The data is what we collect, right? And there are two different types, two different main types. And that, that's the type of variable that we're really looking at. So the types of data are quantitative. Quantitative data is something that we can actually measure. It has some type of measurement to it. So it's numeric. measurements. In quantitative data, there are two different types of measurements. There's something you can count, so there's discrete. Discrete is a subset of quantitative, it's, so I would say it's a discrete quantitative variable. Discrete would be something that's just counted. And there's continuous. And continuous is something that there's always like between two numbers, there's another number. And between those two numbers, there's another number. So for example, if I'm talking about something like height, you could have someone that's five foot nine, you could have five foot ten, you could have five foot nine and a half, you could have five foot nine and three quarters, you could have five foot nine and seven eighths. There's always between two people that are pretty close in height, there's always a third person that could fit right in between them. And that's what we call continuous. So it's like there's numbers in between, I guess. Counting how many birds you see today, that's discrete. Um, how tall those birds are, how much they weigh, how much time has gone by, that's continuous. There's always something in between. Outside of quantitative variables, there's qualitative. And that's not numeric. It is more of some type of trait, some, some type of characteristic trait.
What color is your hair? What color are your eyes? What color is your shirt? What color is the carpet? Um, is the day sunny or not sunny? Things like that. It's some type of characteristic. There is a little bit of confusion sometimes, and that is when you're talking about quantitative versus qualitative, what would you say what your favorite number is? So if I went out and I had all Wayne State students and say I changed this to average number of courses, I just want to find out what the favorite number of Wayne State University students is. Well, is that qualitative or quantitative? This is one of those confusing ones. Because quantitative is something that you measure. You can either count it or it's got numbers in between in terms of like you're measuring time or you're measuring uh, height or you're measuring weight. And qualitative is something characteristic. Your favorite number is not something that's measured. I've got a bigger favorite number. Well, that's kind of strange. It is more of a quality. It's not something I'm counting. It's not something I'm weighing. It's not something I'm getting a tape measure up and seeing how long it is. Your favorite number is a quality. Quantitative is more of something that you actually count. So if we look at this one, what is the average number of courses taken by a Wayne State University student? I'm going to ask individual Wayne State University students how many courses they take. That is something that's counted. You count how many courses you're taking. If you're taking five courses, you maybe got a history course, and an English course, and a math course, and a math course, and a math course. That's five courses. Right? So a quantitative is something that you can measure. In this case, we are doing a quantitative variable, which happens to be discrete because we're counting it. So those are the different types of data. Uh, we've talked about types of samples. So now let's kind of talk a little bit about the, um, there's two different types of studies that we can do. So there are different types of studies. There's an experiment and an observational study. An observational study is when you simply study something. You may go out and ask a question to your individuals in your sample. You may go out and actually look at people's hair color and observe what color it is. You can go out and you can observe how people react to seeing something for the first time. These are observations. An experiment is when you make some type of change and then you see how it changes the response. So in an experiment there's two variables. There is the explanatory variable and there's the response variable. A lot of people like to think about explanatory as like the treatments. Now in an experiment, you actually make some type of change as the scientist that's collecting the data. So in the explanatory variable, you might give someone aspirin, someone Tylenol, someone ibuprofen, and then try to see whether or not they get rid of their headache. So that fact that you're changing something makes it different than an observational study. You're just, just a bystander observing, you're actually doing something. So in an experiment, when you make that change, then you'd re well, you actually like measure the response. So do they get rid of their headache? In an observational study, you're just simply observing or asking the question. Now, you could try to figure out if aspirin gets rid of a headache using both different types of these, of these, of these studies. In the observational study, you would just simply have to go and ask people, does aspirin get rid of your headache? How about you? Does it get rid of your headache? But in an experiment, you could actually test it. You could give half the subjects aspirin, and you could give half of the subjects maybe what's uh, called a placebo, and then see whether or not they get rid of their headache. Now, um, in the observational study, you're not going to get as much information necessarily if you're trying to figure out something like that. So there are certain reasons why you might want to go with an experiment instead. If I simply ask you if aspirin gets rid of your headache, but you've never taken aspirin, how do we really know that it doesn't get rid of your headache? Or maybe your mom told you that aspirin is bad for kids and it's kind of stuck in your head as like aspirin is bad, and so you've never taken it as an adult. And that doesn't really tell us whether or not aspirin works for getting rid of headaches. It tells us something else. There's something lurking in there. Um, so when we're looking at whether or not something is an experiment or an observational study, it really boils down to whether or not we are making some type of change on the data. In this particular instance, we're just going to go out and ask students what, how many courses they're taking. So we're looking at an observational study for this particular one.